Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today, oh, it's a pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things, isn't it? Um, <laughs> it's one of those days, it's one of those weekends. This is take three, I believe, on the Sunday Stuff and Things. My, my mic is plugged in here. Um, I did an entire Sunday Stuff and Things and an entire review where this was plugged in. I made sure to check that, but then the adapter going into the camera was not fully seated, and I recorded the entire thing without audio. Uh, tried again, had another mishap. This is the one. This is the one that you can hopefully hear, and this is the one that I'll be editing soon. I'm kind of running out of time here. You may notice, I don't know if you can tell or not, I don't really have a cold anymore. I think I'm finally over that. I can finally taste things. So that has made it possible for me to finally review a blend. We'll be talking about that soon. We will, of course, have a reading from the throat by Peter Straub. We're gonna get into some failings I've had recently with my email correspondence. We will also be talking about some opportunities I've had with sponsorship. I wanna run that by you as well. We are going to get into Mississippi River Rum Barrel Aged. We will also talk about a mildly embarrassing, weird new hobby I've kind of been picking up recently. And then we will get to your questions in hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. But first, as I mentioned, a reading from Peter Straub's The Throat. And I recently got a nice message from Peter. If you don't know Peter Straub, he's an award-winning author. He is a viewer of the channel. He is a Patreon supporter, an all-around great guy. He has given us permission to read from his book, The Throat, on the channel. And in the last episode, I had gotten to some terms that I didn't recognize, and he sort of clarified that for me. He was talking about some of the native peoples in Vietnam who were sort of in opposition to the Viet Vietnamese and who kind of collaborated and helped out the American soldiers. So I think it was the Rade, R was it R-H-A-D-E? And then there was another tribe as well. So he sort of explained some of those terms to me, which was quite helpful. Thank you, Peter. I was a little lost. But let's continue on here now. Where did we leave off? Ah, uh, yes. Here we go. <coughs> Your turn, underdog, said Attica. Your hands ain't dirty yet, are they? You check this unit out. You puke on it, I'll stomp your guts out, said DeMaestro. And surprised me by laughing. I had not heard De Maestro laugh before. It was a creaky, humorless bray that might have come from one of the bags lined up before us. Yeah, don't puke on the unit, said Pirate. That really messes him up. Attica had intended me to open the bag and find the dead soldier's tag from the moment he had noticed that the matching tag was missing. You're new, boy, he said. This is the new boy's job. I moved towards Attica and the bag with the check. For a moment, I suspected that when I unzipped the bag, some hideous creature would jump out at me, drenched in blood like Ratman after Bobby's sweat had disintegrated in front of him. Because that was why he told the story. They wanted me to scream. They wanted my hair to turn white. After I vomited, they'd take turns stomping my guts out. It was their version of friendly fire. I had not entirely left my old self behind on the tarmac at Tanson Newt, after all. Scoot was regarding me with real curiosity. It's the new boy's job, Attica repeated, and I guess that although, although the term was ridiculous when applied to him, he had been the new boy before me. All right, gang. Peter Straub's The Throat. More of that next week. Now, we are going to get into something which I find myself constantly struggling with, and it's basically me attempting to do a mea culpa. I was recently going through my Stuff and Things email trying to answer some messages, and I started scrolling down and scrolling down and scrolling down and realized that I was far more behind than I had supposed. I try to keep up with the messages, especially when it's someone who has sent me something that they want me to look at. Um, I try to have good communication with those people, but I have found things not only messages from people like, let's say they sent me something to review, I reviewed the thing, and usually I, I keep up good communication throughout that point, but then maybe there's a follow-up and I haven't answered the follow-up yet, and maybe it's several months old. That's horrible. And then there are just nice people who are writing me nice things, who want to tell me something that they thought about the channel or give me some more information about a blend. Just really thoughtful, nice messages and I've really been dropping the ball trying to get back to you. Obviously my excuse is that I work full time, 
it takes a long time to make videos and edit videos and upload and all that stuff. You've heard all the excuses before, but I just want to say I'm doing my best and I'm going to really try to make an effort to get back to everybody. Um, the best way, especially if you have questions for me, things like that, the best way to get a hold of me is via Twitter or Patreon if you're a Patreon supporter, but if on Twitter you tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, that's a great way for me to answer questions. Um, but as far as like email messages, I'm in a big hole and I'm trying to dig my way out of it and hopefully I will be able to do so soon or at least get kind of caught up. I don't know that I will ever be completely caught up. It's just a Herculean task, but I will do my best and I am sorry, please forgive me. Please. Next, speaking of emails and messages and communicating with people, I think I've talked about this a little bit in the past, but I get a lot of offers from companies where they want me to review a product and a lot of the times I say no because it's a product that I don't really have any interest in and I don't think you'll have any interest in. I get a lot of messages from people with vape companies wanting, to, wanting me to review like vape pens and e-liquids and all that stuff and I'm just not into that and so I always say no. But I also get offers from people who actually want to pay me for advertising and I never really know how to respond to that. I'm just, I'm one person and as we were just talking about, I'm not super on top of the business aspect of this whole thing. And they'll be like, hey, shoot me a, a price list for ads on your videos. And I always just say no because I don't, I, I don't know if I'm comfortable about having paid ads for one thing. And then I also don't know the first thing about ad rates on a YouTube video or how that even works. Is there a way of like calculating, okay, you get this many views, you have this many subscribers, you might get this many eyes, so this is my rate. I just have no idea. So I usually just say no, or I've always just said no, in spite of the fact that occasionally when I, redo, when I do a review, someone will write a comment saying, you were paid for this. I've never been paid for any review. Anytime I do a review for a product that I didn't pay for myself, the product may have been provided to me by the company, but that's it. There are no strings attached to that. I have uh, full freedom to say whatever I want about that product, and I always make that very clear with the people if they're sending me something. But recently, I got a message from someone who's really cool who wrote to me because her boyfriend is a fan of the channel, discovered the channel, started pipe smoking, and uh, you know really got into the hobby through my channel, and so she thought, she, uh, she works for a company, she kind of manages the affiliates, I think, for the company, and she offered to send me their product, which I think looks like a really cool product, and to do a review of it, and then she said, like, oh, well, we can either pay you, or we can do an affiliate link, and I don't want a paid review, so I was thinking the affiliate link might be okay, so basically, I do a review of the product. If you guys like it and want to purchase it, if you use the link, the affiliate link that I provide, then I get a percentage of the proceeds. And I just want to know, does that sound okay to you? Because I think, I think it's okay. I wrote to her and said, you know, if I do this, I'm going to be very honest. I'm going to want to use the product for several weeks before I do a video on it. Um, if there's anything I'm critical of, I'm going to be critical of it in the review. And she said, that's all cool. So I just wanted to run that by you guys. I'm not going to even mention the product yet until I know for sure that I want to do it. But um, just let me know in the comments below if that seems cool, doing like an affiliate link. It's not a paid review, but it is a review that if you purchase the item through my affiliate link, I will get some cash for that. Wet my beak a little bit. So let me know if that's okay. Now. As I mentioned, my cold is pretty much done. I'm kind of not stuffed up anymore. I can kind of taste again. Uh, hold on. There we go. And so I was able to just do my review of Seattle Pipe Club Mississippi River Rum Barrel Aged. And this is a blend. When I first did the initial impressions video, uh, my taste buds were not in the greatest position or they weren't in the, the best of health at the time. I couldn't really taste very well. 
but I thought, eh, maybe this might be something. And typically I don't like blends that have any sort of alcohol flavoring added to them at all. And of course this is aged in a rum barrel um, and then a rum barrel stave is included very much like originally uh, Frog Morton Cellar was with a whiskey barrel stave. This one I was sort of unsure of, but I was kind of positive on it in the initial impressions. And I've done the full review now that will be posting this Wednesday. And I was pretty surprised by this. I think you should watch the review. I ended up being pretty positive and maybe this is a good, I don't know, maybe the air to the crown that uh, Frog Morton Cellar had as a good crossover aromatic, aromatic blend or a good first English blend for people who only used to smoke aromatics. So check this review out. It's pretty interesting. Um, and I found myself being kind of surprised by this blend. Something else I wanted to mention. I don't know if you noticed the shirt that I'm wearing right now. Let me get a little closer. Can you see that? Can you read that? It's very cool. This was actually a, a gift, one of my Christmas gifts from my fiance, which I think is very neat. Do you understand what this has to say? Let me know in the comments below if you get this, because I think it's pretty cool and pretty clever. Thank you, sweetheart, for giving me this wonderful shirt. Now we're going to talk about something that's mildly embarrassing, mildly weird. Um, I'm an ancient man and I shouldn't be doing certain things. And the thing that I'm going to show you that I shouldn't be doing, I really shouldn't be doing, but I recently started picking up a hobby and it is this. It is a skateboard and I, I don't even know how to proceed with this. I don't really know how this happened. I guess I do kind of know how this happened. I was really interested in the one wheel, that weird electric one wheeled conveyance. I guess you can't really call it a skateboard. Um, they seem really cool to me. I was into them, but they're super expensive. They're like over $2,000 and I was just, I guess through watching videos of one wheels on YouTube and stuff, I started watching skateboarding videos and I have never stood on a skateboard in my life. I don't think maybe once or twice as a little kid, I got on a friends and like fell off or something, but it was not anything that I ever really did. I've never done any board sports really. I've never snowboarded. Maybe I snowboarded once maybe. Um, I don't really ski. I don't, I don't do anything like that. I'm fairly nimble. I have fairly good balance. I'm physically active and everything, but someone of my advanced age picking up a skateboard and deciding that they're going to try to get good at it or at least okay at it is kind of a weird thing to do. I think one of the things that sort of appealed to me about it was the fact that you can set it up. Like you buy the deck, you buy the trucks, you buy the wheels and the, the, uh, the bearings and everything, and you can kind of put it all together. I kind of enjoy that aspect of it. So I ended up ordering this because this is one thing it's way, way cheaper than a one wheel. I think you can get like a complete board for around a hundred bucks or so if it's a decent, decent wood and decent wheels and everything. And I ended up doing it, buying it. And then I recorded a video of me setting this up with the intention that I probably would never show it to you, but just in case I would have it sort of cataloged. And then I recorded some stuff of me first stepping on this. Well, actually <laughs> the one thing I didn't record was I set all this up and then I had it in my apartment. I was like, okay, let me stand on this, this skateboard. And I don't know if, if none of you have ever done this before, it's fairly narrow. This is an eight inch or no, I think an eight and a quarter board. The trucks, the wheels are pretty loose. Um, so you stand on this and it just starts going like this. And I immediately stood on it in my apartment. It immediately went whoosh, and I went whoosh, and this smashed into the wall. I smashed into my hat rack. I hurt my wrist and I was just like, Oh God, what am I doing? What am I doing? But slowly and surely I started taking this out. It was a fun time. This is before the weather went to shit around here and it's been so like crappy and snowy and wet and cold that I haven't really been able to be on this in a while. But there was a period where I was going out with my fiance and we would go to this park nearby that was kind of, kind of new and not frequented by very many people. And there were these bike paths around 
and I would just slowly start to try to push myself around, get on the board, and started out really slowly, really unsure, really unstable, but slowly I started getting better and I can get to the point now where I can, I can get on this and I can ride and I can push. It's really rewarding. It's really dumb. It's mildly embarrassing. Occasionally someone else who's like actually knows how to skateboard and who's probably like 17 will ride by and kind of give me a weird look, but it's fun. It's really fun. It's really hard. It's really hard to do, but I get, I don't know. There's a certain satisfaction you can get from chipping away at something and you can see constant improvement and concrete results. And I think that that's something that can translate to other aspects of our lives. And I guess the whole point in bringing this up is, you know, you would look at someone my age and think, no, there's no way you should buy a skateboard and get on a skateboard. And also the fact that my work requires me to be physically fit and physically able to do things. It's probably kind of dumb to be getting on something that could injure me fairly easily, but I'm trying to be careful and everything. But you can do it. I guess that's my point. You can do things that you don't think you can do. And I think especially as you start getting older, it's important to keep challenging yourself and keep mixing things up a little bit. Cause I'm, I'm guilty of this as well. I, I can really get into a routine and really get comfortable doing things the same way at the same time all the time and kind of challenging yourself. And again, I don't think I do this enough, but I'm trying to get better at it. Challenging yourself to do something new that seems daunting can be frightening. It can be uncomfortable, but if you do stick with it and you do start seeing results, it can be something that really helps make you feel as though you're accomplishing something. Even if it's something as, I guess, ultimately pointless as getting on a skateboard. But I don't know, something like this can help improve your balance, help can improve your physical fitness. I'm pretty physical fit anyway. I work out a lot. I'm active at work and everything, but I don't know. It, is it crazy? I guess it's kind of crazy. Um, if any of you out there are just super, super curious to see any videos on this, maybe I'll try to post something eventually, but I'm not going to be, you know, doing crazy tricks or anything. I think my goal is to get really comfortable at pushing around and then uh, to get into some skateboarding term terminology. I want to be able to ollie. I want to be able to do some shove -its, some 180s maybe. And then I want to be able to do a kickflip ultimately uh, where you take the board, you do an ollie and flip it up and then flip the board entirely and then land on the board. Uh, I think that's my goal and I, I'm not, this isn't going to turn into a skateboarding channel or anything like that where I'm like, okay, month one. Uh, but just let me know if you see, if you think that that would be something you'd like to see. And then again, I just encourage you guys if, and anyone out there, if you want to do something, just give it a try and put in the effort, challenge yourself on a daily basis to get better. And as you chip away at something like that, I think you'll feel a really nice sense of accomplishment. But now it is time for hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the show, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things, and I will do my best to answer you. Also, if you are a Patreon supporter, you can write to me on there. I don't have any Twitter questions this week, but I do have some Patreon questions. So please keep those questions coming on Twitter via Patreon. We have a message from Dave. Dave says, Hello Bradley, greetings from Seattle. I'm traveling to Paris and London in a few weeks. I'm curious to know, are there any great blends I should be looking for that are hard to come by over here in the States? Cheers and thanks for all you do. Thank you for the question, Dave. And thank you for being a Patreon supporter. Um, you know, this is kind of an interesting question because in the past, before all the FDA stuff was going on, I would usually hear the opposite, where there were Europeans lamenting the fact that they couldn't get their hands on a lot of American blends that weren't getting over to Europe. I don't know really if things have changed that much. I can't think of any major blends or major lines that we can't get in the US, but that may change in the future. There may be some, some manufacturers who just decide it's not worth it trying to uh, export to the US anymore. And so if there are any Europeans out there who know of specific blends that are their favorites that we can't get here, 
mention them in the comments below. I'm sure that would be helpful to Dave. Next, we have a question from Koti Strigla, a nice Patreon supporter. He is in our $25 tier. He gets a shout out every week. Cody says, hey Bradley, hope all is well and you finally kicked your sickness to the curb. I think pretty much, pretty much. Last Sunday's video, you mentioned that you were playing The Witcher 3. That's my all-time favorite game. And Cody, I have to say, it's, it's getting up there with me too. It's a great game. Have you watched the first season on Netflix yet? Thanks for all the content. P.S. Still waiting on the Escudo Revisited. Uh, I will probably get to that. I don't remember if I said I was going to do that. I probably did. And I will probably get to that soon. Um, the Witcher 3 Netflix series. I have not seen it. I know that it's super popular. And I know that I think it's the number one show on Netflix right now, which I find kind of crazy. I didn't watch it initially because I hadn't played the game yet. And I hadn't played any of the games, read any of the books or anything like that. And so I didn't have any background on it and thought that that might kind of ruin the game for me because I knew I was planning on playing the game. Now that I have played maybe, I don't know, maybe half of the game, um, I do have some background on the characters, but then I was reading reviews of the show and a lot of the reviews were very negative. So I don't know, maybe it's actually good. I haven't really seen anything about it at all, but maybe I'll try to check it out. If any of you are, if you are fans of the series, have played the games, read the books, whatever, how does the, the Netflix series measure up? Or if you went into the Netflix series without any background in it at all, how do you like it as just someone coming in new to the whole, I guess, lore of this, this book series and everything just through watching the Netflix series? Let me know again in the comments below. But now, gang, it is time for the very best part of the show, and that is where we thank our Patreon supporters. If you would like to support the channels on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash stuffandthingsshow. There is a link in the uh, description box below. We really appreciate it, and people who support the channel at $25 or more a month get a special shout-out every week. People like... Glenn, Derek, Cody Striegler, who we just heard from, Nathaniel Hills, Kirk Crompton, Private Eye, C.W. Piperman, Ryan McFadden, Corbin Morbin, Adam Loveless, M.D. of the North, Ryan Stoffer, and A.J. Hogue. Thank you all so much for being $25 supporters. And now for the maniac tier, the crazy people who support the channel at $100 a month and who are also entitled to a, a Skype chat with me every two months or three months. I can't remember what it was now. Uh, people like Peter Straub. Thank you there very, very much, Peter. Bob McGee, Stolid Dependable Bob, and Michael Pilcher. I'm looking forward to talking to you all, except for Bob. Bob never wants to talk to me. I don't know, but Peter and Michael I've had some great conversations with, and I'm looking forward to speaking to them again. But gang, that's it for this week's Sunday Stuff and Things. Please check out the final review of Seattle Pipe Club Mississippi River Rum Barrel Aged this Wednesday. On Stuff and Things Plays, we are continuing with the Outer Wilds or Outer Wilds and Minecraft as well. So check that out too. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been a good friend, Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a pleasant Sunday smoke. I'll see you later.